nuclear fission. So fission, uh, you want to remember going from larger molecules to smaller, or larger nuclei, I should say, to smaller nuclei. Uh, so we're breaking the nuclei apart. That energy that's given off, we can use to power. Uh, and it's a uh, can be very useful power-wise. So for example, one gram of uranium-235 uh, can produce 7.4 times 10 to the 10 joules. Okay, well, imagine how large one gram is. That much energy can also be uh, made with three tons of coal. So this is how efficient this is. That's how it's huge amounts of energy. Imagine, I mean, how dirty three tons of coal is. This has its own uh, dirtiness going along with it. First, let me show you, before I talk about that, I'll show you an example of what a nuclear fission plant can look like. Uh, so, this would be the plant. Uh, the dome part is where actually the reaction is occurring. You have, you have to take in, you have to be by water somehow to take in water for the cooling process. So it has to cool your reactor uh, because it gets so, so hot. That much energy is just so crazy hot, it has to cool it down. Uh, and then that water comes out. Uh, so one problem is you're warming the water for the fish. Why is that a problem? Well, okay, they could die, and why would they die? What's that? Okay, well, let's say it's, as she said, can't handle heat stress. Let's say it's just a, a fraction of a degree. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a major problem. That the solubility, as temperature goes up, the solubility of a gas goes down. That's Henry's law. Okay? So because that's true, uh, you're decreasing the amount of oxygen that can be uh, taken in by the fish. Okay? So that, that's a major problem. Uh, if you have a, a larger body of water, it's obviously bigger. So that's more diluted uh, as it comes out. And the other problem is nuclear waste, which we'll talk about a little bit. Um, the other problem is nuclear meltdown. And we did an example for Chernobyl. Uh, and uh, the other really popular example, and that totally decimated that whole area of the land. Uh, other big popular in our area is Three Mile Island. Um, so what happened, uh, there was a problem with the coolant water. Some of the rods started to melt uh, and, and get really hot. So these control rods right in there. Uh, and so, luckily, that was contained within the reactor. So there wasn't a, a large degree of fallout for Three Mile Island, as was with Chernobyl. So there have been some examples, usually from uh, just worker error, uh, that have caused nuclear meltdown. Um, but when this works, it's fantastic, because there's a great amount of energy that you can get out of it. Uh, so the other problem is uh, nuclear waste. So what do you do with it? Do you bury it in Nevada where nobody really lives anyways? Or what the heck? What, do you put it under salt? Uh, do you throw it in the ocean? Uh, so that's a problem of, of what to do with it. But it can be processed. Uh, so some of it can be processed to make uh, less radioactive. Uh, something that goes along with this is people have occasionally thought of the idea of having a nuclear-powered car, um, which would also be great because if that would work, you'd probably refuel only every five to ten years. Do you imagine that? Just going to the gas station, you'd probably even forget how to fuel up after like ten years. Like, how do I do this again? Uh, the problem is, with that amount, uh, that we'd want to power the car, you'd probably kill yourself and the passengers and everybody you drive by on the sidewalk. So that is still the problem. How would you contain that radiation that could get out of there? Okay, related to this uh, somewhat, or to nuclear reactions, is that of uh, nuclear
Bigler bombs. We're going to spend a little time talking about uh, Bigler bombs. Let me start the tape. 